uh, my next step is to create uh, curve boundaries for my patches that I'll use to cover the surface with uh, the surface of this clay. I'll put patch surfaces in. Um, I want to break up the boundaries. You can see my center line runs around the edge here, comes down around the bottom. Uh, there's already separate segments already just from how I created the curve. I want to break them into slightly smaller segments as I create my boundaries. So when I draw my curves, I'm going to use a tool called split and create and use the fit tool. Uh, as I create these curves I'm going to use uh, start with 16 fit points as I create them and uh, you can see as I start this curve here and I click it's automatically broken that curve and I'll put a curve across here. This will be my boundary for this part of the handle. Uh, I'll do some just simple tweaking to it in terms of how it goes across my center line. I'll pick its tangent and say align that to center line and same thing on the other side. And I'm going to do this to each one of the boundaries of my curves and I'll get the best mirroring this way between the two patches, so the patches on each side. So I'll say mirror, mirror that to center line as well. So I've created that. The next step is to build a patch boundary that comes down from my sheet body edge. Now this is one area where I don't want to break that curve. I want to leave that curve whole. Uh, I don't want to split it or change that data any, in any way because that's what aligns to my sheet body at the top that is currently, currently I have it hidden, but I don't want to change that interface between what I'm building is reverse engineer surfaces here and what is the original data up above it. So in this case, my first point, I'm going to turn off fit, uh, split on create and connect to that edge. Notice it's drawn a T connection, it's in yellow. I'll turn the split on create tool on so then the next curve I intersect will be split. So in one single curve I've got one T connection and one split. I'll do the same thing on the other side from this corner and say split on create there. So you can see that I've done uh, two curves. I've split this curve that's gone across into three sections and yet I've got one whole curve still remaining across the top. Again, I don't want to change that curve. It's the thing that aligns my two sets of data. Now here I've fully networked the side of the uh, model uh, so that I've got my patch layout or my grid kind of arranged like I want. And even while you're laying it out, here's a couple things that you can be doing. What you want to do is look for, you want as close to 90 degree intersection as, as possible. And uh, version 8 lets you go in and edit those patches, be able to change them around where you want them. Uh, without having to remake your curves. Once you have your patch network defined, you can begin uh, placing in fit patches. So you select your patch tool, you select fit to clay. Uh, one thing to do almost immediately is to, in your options, turn off suppress patch fit warnings. If you click that, it won't warn you that the patches are uh, different in their uh, U and V. Uh, it was just put in there as a safety measure so that people were aware, but after you use it for a while, you'll become aware of that and you won't need that warning. So with that off, I can say, click on this edge, I've created a patch, uh, create another patch here, uh, create another patch here, create another patch, and I can work my way down the entire side of the model and be able to lay in patches. So you can see I've uh, placed patches in each one of the uh, within each one of the boundaries, uh, and the patches overall just uh, on the first pass turned out pretty well. Uh, there's a couple areas I want to tune up, and I have a um, an area right here in particular where uh, I'm going to shut off the display of the curves just momentarily. You can see these two patches are not well aligned at all. There could be a number of things doing it, but I know the clay under there is smooth, and they should connect smoother than that. The first thing to tweak is the curve that uh, bounds in each one of those patches. So I'll use my select tool and I'll go and pick that curve. And I can see it's got 10 points. I pick the patch and I can see the patch has uh, 10 and 28 points. If I turn on the display of that I can see that the 10 go in the direction of the curve. Uh, I'll look at my other patch. I can see it's got a lot more. Well, this patch here is probably fitting a lot tighter than this one here which has less. So I can adjust the curve. I don't have to adjust this patch actually. I can adjust the curve to have more points. And it will pull both patches down into alignment. So I'll go and set that curve to say 16. Let's try 16 and see what that does. I'll turn off my curves. 
I've got a much better fit already. There's a, uh, you might not be able to see it, but there's still a slight mismatch there. So I'm going to turn my curve on again, and I'll set that value up to 20. I look at it now, and I've got a much better fit, much better alignment. There's a couple areas where I want to adjust that. There's an area up on top here I'd like to adjust as well. And you can go through your model pretty quickly and be able to adjust this. But uh, just step your way up and uh, look at the change that happens and evaluate whether your patch is better. Again, that's considerably better. I think I'll bump it just up to 20, and I think I'll have a lot better fit. And again, what we have happening there is the patches are fitting differently than their boundary curves, because while they get some information for their fit from the boundary curves, the patches don't necessarily fit exactly like the curves, because there could be two different patches on one curve. So in this way, we're just saying, hey, you know what? Bump up the thing that's shared between both of them, and it'll help us do our patch fits. So you can see here we've got a much better fit on our patches. And this is how to do your patch tweaking on your model. You can walk right up the whole side of it within about 10, uh, 10 minutes, have the whole thing cleaned up and aligned correctly. Uh, per patch, there are tools for being able to do alignments to the patches next to them, but as long as you're fit well, in other words, I can say make one a leader, one a follower, but you know these are fit so well to the clay that I really don't need that. One thing that I do want to do for each one of the patches that surrounds my model, I want to align them across their mirror plane because I'm going to mirror these patches from one side to the other and I want them to be aligned to each other. Uh, and in the mirroring command I don't want anything to happen uh, where I get a discontinuity on my center line. So using this tool lets me line that up. Remember previously we had taken the curves and we had taken their tangents and lined them to center line as well. So when we do both, both, poach it, both patches and curves will get the best alignment of our surfaces when we mirror the two. Uh, so let's do let's go do that now. So to mirror my patches, I'm going to first turn off the sheep body at the top. I don't need to see the uh, the part that's already surrounded uh, on both sides. Uh, I can see I have patches on one side and nothing on the other. I can blank out the display of the clay and just go into mirroring my patches. So I select mirror patch and as I go and it's going to use the default mirror plane or, or you can select another plane it's using the one that I used to mirror the entire clay model to begin with as I select these I hold down the control key to select several and I just go down and select all my patches and I can also do the same selection from the object list I can say let's mirror all these so sometimes that's easier, sometimes picking it individually from the screen is easier. And I select Apply, and it creates the patches that are mirrored on the other side, which gives me my uh, symmetrical model. If I turn off the curves and step out of that area, I can see I've got the model mirrored on each side. The next thing is, uh, while I have the tube at the top that's going to close off the top, I want to close off these side faces so that I can make a solid out of this handle section. Remember we said before that we're going to put in a polygon section here that lets you put texture detail in and that's just that's going to be separate from the actual solid model because it's an area that's molded separately. It's just going to be a rubber grip and it will be molded in uh, its own type of material different than the rest of the model. So to fill these holes in or you know the gaps in the front what I do is just draw a curve from one side to the other you know using the same points that were there and then I just create patches that are not fit, you know, just regular plain patches, I'll use manual boundary selection so I can pick which edges I want to create the patch from and uh, build another one. And I've built all the other ones previously just for this example. But I just fill that area in and what I'm left with is a closed model that I can now stitch into a solid. I don't need to see those curves and my next step is to stitch it into a simple solid.